Hey everyone, it's Desiree and I am here with Spellbinders and we are going to create our card, a very beautiful fall card, using the Fun Stamper's Journey Stamp of the Month for September. This is actually called Friendship Blessing and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's got a little bit of everything. It's got a little bit of winter, it's got a little bit of fall, it's got great sentiments and that came from the designer yes um, but these images are great to color and that's what we're going to be doing today as always the dies are not part of the stamp of the month but they are available to purchase separately so for today's project I'm going to be using my Blick Studio colored pencils and this is my mix media toned gray uh, uh, cardstock from Strathmore. Um, I love the toned grays, tan, and blues um, with the colored pencils, but when you have the paper, it's very thin, but they have a mixed media that is to die for that is a lot thicker. So I'm definitely going to use that. And I did choose the gray because of the colors that I'm going to be using. I immediately fell in love with that sunflower. It, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I'm stamping this in my Simon Says Fog. It's a light ink. Um, so again, gray on gray. Yes. And I want to do some no line coloring with my colored pencils. I've really been working with that. You know, usually I see my lines and, you know, that's easiest for me. Um, but no line coloring, that's yeah, kind of new. I mean, not new. It's been around for a while, but for me, it is. And I just, I want to keep working at that. If you've seen my previous videos, you know colored pencils are my medium of choice. Um, yes, they do take longer, but we'll get into that. So you can see I did two masks. I've got three because we always work with odd numbers. Took the mask off, forgetting that I need to stamp more images. So we're going to put those back in place. And I've add, I'm going to be adding the berries, you know, that's kind of like the winter part, you know, when you think of those, you know, berries. Um, and then I'm going to be adding the leaves onto this. So I'm just stamping these images around. Um, it does look, when you first stamp with the fog, it does look like it's pretty dark, but this really does dry back a lot. And after 24 hours, you will not see it, which is awesome. It's good. again, perfect for no line coloring. I do like to use, um, when it comes to my, um, my coloring with colored pencils, I don't like to necessarily use black. I will, um, but black sometimes can be harsh, but sometimes it's the only ink I can find on my desk. So. You can see I'm just moving these masks all around and just adding in my leaves and those berries to fill up this card. And again, just the, the corner and coming up the sides. I do want to leave a spot open for my sentiment. What I do also like about these stamps too is they are red rubber. There's nothing like a red rubber stamp takes up more space, but there's nothing like it. All right. Now I have Uber sped this up. Okay. Um, I kept all of the coloring in and I'm going to probably try to talk a little slower <laughs> because you have all expressed greatly that you like the chatter. You don't like the music part. So you can see that this is the only time that you're actually going to see the colorless blender, by the way. Um, that's usually how I blend my colored pencils is either with the colorless blender or my white pencil, which is always the Prisma color. Um, I do like the Prisma color white. I like its opaqueness and I like the way it does blend. Um, I'm not a Gamsol user. It, it freaks me out that says you shouldn't be be inhaling this and yet it's odorless. It just freaks me out. If I do use a liquid 
to blend my colored pencils, I do use um, baby oil with a blending stump. Um, and what I actually do um, eventually is I'm going to be looking at putting it into a pen. So anyway, back to this. I'll let you know how that goes, by the way. So you can see I laid, I kind of work colored pencils the same way that we do with our alcohol markers for the most part, because we all have different ways. So I like to put my lightest color down, fill up the whole area. Then I will come in with my darkest color, depending upon how many layers that I have or how many different colors. In this case, for each of the flowers and each of the color themes that I have, I have three colors. I have a light, medium, and a dark. So after I have that coat of the light down, I then come in with the darkest color. I put that where I want that. In this case, for the flower, it's right up the center and a little bit along the bottom. Then I come in with the medium color. And when I come in with the medium color, I'm going all over where the dark is. So I'm going over what the dark is taking over and then I'm coming out further with the medium. By doing that, that pushes out the dark. It blends it, all right? It makes it, believe it or not, it makes it move. I do not use a heavy pressure. If you use a heavy pressure right off the bat with colored pencils, whether they're oil-based or whether they're wax-based, you will not be able to add more colors and shading to it. You will have that film that comes across. You'll have the waxy buildup or the oil buildup and eventually it just creates a barrier that you're no longer able to put color down. So I just keep adding and adding and adding and adding until I get to that level that I want. Once I have the three colors down for the petals, I then am coming back in with my white on the tip and bringing that down just a little bit. By adding the white, I'm adding my highlight. Now, if I wanted these petals to have a more rounded effect, then I would also put the dark on the tips as well. So I would have the dark at the base and I would have the dark at the top coming into the center and then that's where I would put my white. That's going to give me a curved petal as if it's curving away from me. I didn't, I wasn't going for that look. I was in some, but when it came to the yellow, I wanted that one to come up a little bit farther because I have those petals in the back that are going to be darker. I do add because I have that darker color in the back. I am adding just a touch of dark to the tips of those, but not too much when it comes to the yellow flower. When I work on my center, I started out with this rust shade. Realized it was not the shade I wanted. Yeah. The beauty of it. Now I covered the entire area. Again, it's not a lot of pressure that I've put down. You can still see the cardstock that I'm working on through this. Here's where I realize that I'm going in with the color that I want. Um, I can still add that color. So again, remember, if you come off right off the bat with colored pencils using a heavy pressure, you're not going to be able to add your layers. Now, how can you stop that or avoid that, what can help you? Take your hand further away from the point of the pencil. That's how you can be guaranteed to have a light pressure. The closer your hand is that you're holding the pencil to the point, the heavier the, heavier the pressure you may have or is possible because it's right there. If you take your hand further away from the point of your, of your colored pencil, and the color you're using, the less chance you have to will have use heavy pressure. I'll have to show that in another video. I'm not sure if I explained that right. 
So you can see I'm doing the same thing. I'm, I've moved on to the berries. I'm using a brown for the stems. I'm just drawing over those lines that are stamped in the Simon Says Fog. Again, adding my lightest color first, coming in with the dark, then coming in with the medium and blending all of that out. I know I am trying to show you all of these, but again, I've really uber sped this up um, just so that you can see the coloring. Um, this piece, don't you just love my washi tape there too? It's supposed to tell me keep the piece there so that I stay in frame. Um, now I'm really zooming in. Um, yeah, I shift all over the place. So that's why I put that down there um, to make sure. And if I see that washi tape, I know I have a chance that I'm out of frame for you guys. So yeah, it helps. Yeah. Um, but I wanted you guys to see all of this coloring. Coloring these, this piece took me, all right, now I'm going to tell you the real time and I'll tell you why. So yeah, okay, now we're going to get a little Gabby. So this piece total took me two hours to color. Now this is why. Now every once in a while, you could see my hands are doing some strange things or, you know, I'm not really coloring. That's because everyone and anyone called me at this moment, not any other time during the day, but this moment, my phone was off the hook and I keep my phone next to me. I can actually keep two phones next to me. One's the house phone and one's my, my cell phone. Um, because in case somebody does need me for work, I have to keep my cell phone near me, um, for both jobs, really this one and also, uh, my full-time job. But, but for the, for the home phone, I've been playing phone tag with, with someone um, and we've just been missing each other. Well, today was the day we were finally able to catch up and I was very thankful for that. And I was not going to let this opportunity to go, but boy, we were really on the phone and we were having a great time on the conversation. But as I'm coloring, the problem is, um, I talk with my hands, but like even right now I'm doing a voiceover. You all can't see me, but there's times as I'm explaining something, I'm pointing to the screen or um, my hands are just flailing all over the place. It's absolutely comical. Absolutely. Um, well, I was doing that. That's why we have so many breaks in this video as well. It's not a continuous stream because if you speed up the video, you really don't have to do much editing. You can just let it roll. Um, you may have some downtimes if you walk away to pick up something when you change, but th in this case, you really didn't. But there were times where my hand was just going all over the place. I was flailing and it, it was just bad. So there's a lot of editing that's here. So I do <laughs> apologize for that, but it was amazing. Um, what was going on and every time I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm coloring and every time I would realize it, I'm like, Oh, I gotta edit that out. Oh, I gotta, okay. Let me stop this. Let me go do something else as I'm having this conversation. So it was absolutely hysterical, but a wonderful conversation. Um, I truly, truly enjoyed it. Um, I was so glad we were finally able to, to catch up and link up. Um, and it'll, it's, it's going to be fun. So, that's why there's just so many breaks in this video. Um, sometimes I couldn't edit all of it out because I didn't want to take it out. Maybe I was showing something new. Um, at least I was able to get through, <laughs> you know, when I did the yellow one, I did a berry, I did the leaves. So you got to see all of that. So at least you're, you're seeing how I'm looking at those colors. So when it comes to the red sunflower, Yes, I made mine red. Very folly colors. Yes. Um, you can see now we've talked about highlights and we've talked about shadows, which adds depth. So a lot of times when we think of this, we think of dark red, medium, light red. Those are the colors that we need to get our different shades to get our different grades. Mm, no, you don't have to, your dark, 
if, if you want the flower to be red, have your medium shade be red. That's, that's what you, that's how I look at it. Okay. I'm not going to say that's how you should look at it. That's, that's what I do. So if I'm looking at my focal point to be a certain color, I use, if in this case, I wanted it red. I wanted it this burgundy red. So my medium color is going to be that red, that red that I want. When it comes to my lighter color, again, I don't think it's going to be a light red. That could actually be an orange. It could actually also be a yellow. It could also be the white. So again, medium color is always the color that I want my image to be. It's my outliers, my light and my dark when it comes to my shading. Because white, I never factor in my white. My white is always my highlight. It's my blender. It blends all of these colors together for me. So when it comes to the darker color, well, now we've got a whole range you can use, in this case, I used a brown. It's actually a dark reddish brown. I'm, I'm trying to look at the color. Yes, it was actually, it's actually called dark brown. Hey, I have my colors right here. <laughs> All right. That I'm using to add the depth, to add the shading. Okay. It doesn't have to be a dark red. Sometimes if you get into a dark red, you might be adding a different color that's gonna change the color tone of your flower. Again, my medium color is the color scheme that I'm going for. But for red, you can use a brown to keep it into the wine or the deep burgundies. You can also use a dark blue because that's gonna give you some purple shades. So you can use the dark blue. I like indigo. It's either dark brown, indigo, black, or dark, the deepest dark green. Those are my shaded colors, and I use them throughout everything. For red, I can use dark brown. I can use the darkest blue. I can also use black. I won't use green on a red. If I'm using a purple, if I wanted this flower purple, I could use, of course, a dark purple, the black, or the dark blue. I necessarily won't add the brown. So you can see, for green, I'll add blue. I'll sometimes even add purple with that, very light strokes that come up. Black, brown. So green's kind of the universal one for me, and I know some people are like, no, you don't put those colors together. These are just things for colored pencils that I've, again, I just try. I love my handheld sharpener. Um, when it comes to, uh, depending upon the colored pencils that I'm using, I will nine out of 10 always use my handheld sharpeners. I think I have a better control when it comes to sharpening. I do not use a blade to sharpen my colored pencils. Two reasons. One, I don't, I, I need a sharp point and that would just drive me crazy doing that. And two, which is really probably one, I would cut myself in a heartbeat. Have you seen what I've done with scissors? I'm just saying. So yeah. I don't use the blades. I will though use a sharpener and I have recently found a beautiful handheld sharpener. It looks like the old ones, the old, the old school ones. Again, I'm aging myself here, but that's what I used to use when I was in kindergarten and first grade and you know, those handheld sharpeners. It looks like that. Um, it's wonderful. And I keep that bowl. It just goes in there and that's what I use. I keep all my shavings in there and, and everything else. Um, so handheld sharpener is what I do like to use. Do I have a mechanical one? I do. I have the Orbit one, um, but I use that for, you know, like if I have my Crayola colored pencils, um, 
if I'm using, you know, my, my Sargent Art pencils, which are great pencils, by the way. You know, they those sets are awesome. Um, they're just they're just easier to get replacements for. Um, so that's when I'll use, and I love that Orbit sharpener. I think Gina K got me hooked on that. Thank you, Gina. Um, she always pulled that one out, and it and it's phenomenal. It's on batteries, and it runs absolutely great, and it gives you a great point. Um, so, but I am a, a handheld uh, sharpener type person. I think you don't lose as much when you use the hand sharpener. So, okay, back to this. So you can see I'm still going through. So now I've got my yellow one nice and bright, you know, wah, right there. Um, I probably should have added a little bit more dark to the tips of those. Um, but again, I kind of wanted that one to be the forefront. Um... So I'm doing my centers. You can see I'm using the dark brown and I am using um, black. I'm actually pulling black into the centers of these flowers to add the shading. So you can see how those hands were going across. Yep, that was a conversation that I was having. Yep. So didn't edit that out. I wanted to keep again. I wanted to keep as much as I can in here. So this flower, the third one, so I've got a beautiful yellow one. I've got this beautiful, deep wine looking red going on there. So this one's going to be a golden yellow, okay? Or a golden brown, whichever way you wanna go. Um, so again, I'm putting down my light shade. And again, I like, for some reason, I chose to do each petal as I went, I only, if I did go ahead, I went to two or maybe three. Um, but you could put your light color all over. Um, when it comes, when I do no line coloring, as I keep practicing with this to get used to it. Um, and really when I pull in my no line coloring concept of when I want to do that, it's always a floral. It's always, always a floral. No two if fans or butts about it. Um, if it's another type of image, nine out of ten, I'm using a colored ink, which is just hysterical to me. Um, if I'm practicing my coloring, um, you know, when I just want to play and, and just have fun to say, okay, hey, let's see what this does, um, then I'll use an outline as well so I can see the lines. So when I do my no line coloring, I tend to do each of the petals because again, as you're coloring, you're, you're losing, you know, you're, you're losing those lines that you're seeing. Um, so I always like to make sure that I, I do a puddle. I don't get too far ahead of myself because then I'll get lost and I'll lose the image and I never want to lose the image. My goal, I'll tell you all my goal. My goal is to be able to do one of, and I don't know if you guys will know what I'm talking about, but Tim Holtz, Stampers Anonymous came out with those huge, those huge florals. The rubber, the red rubber, and I mean, you would have to make, I think your card would have to be like a seven by 10 when after this image is stamped. I mean, they're beautiful. I think there's three of them out. Um, they're absolutely gorgeous. I know I keep saying that. My goal is to, <clears throat> what I'm trying to get to, to keep practicing, I wanna do one of those in no line coloring. <laughs> yeah. And there's our card. See, that brought me up to the thing. See, I told you my goal. Um, I don't know if I'll film that because it could take forever. And if I do film it, there'll probably be no words, just music, and you'll be able to enjoy the process. How's that? Um, but yeah, that's what my goal is. I'm really trying to lead up to one of those. Oh, I'm scared. Okay. So I've got my sentiment out. I got really nervous because I absolutely fell in love with this card. I did not want my card to get screwed up in any way, shape, or form. It was a paranoia thing. It just took over on me. So I grabbed the strip um, of the cardstock piece that was left, and I'm just going to stamp my image, and I'm using my Gina K charcoal brown. I didn't want to come in with a black. I could have, because I did use black in the center of my flowers, um, but I, 
I just didn't want it that dark, although it probably would have looked the same because this charcoal brown is just beautiful and it's dark. Of course, not that I need a reason. We are in the fall. The vintage photo comes out like there's no tomorrow. Um, many cards will have it. So I just wanted to go around the sentiment just to make that stand up or stand out just a little bit. This panel was cut four and a quarter by five and a half, so it will cover the entire card base, which is a standard A2 size card base, and it is it going to be a top folding card base. I keep saying card base. So with that, I am going to prop up the sentiment, and you can see one of the dies that are available separately to purchase does cover the um, sentiment. Now, no, there is not a die for if you were looking at the dies that I showed before, there is not a die for the big sunflower, which I thought was fun, but interesting. Um, so I'm going to prop that up and I'm going to set that in that opening. It probably would have looked better if I just stamped it directly on there. But again, I just got paranoid. I didn't want it to <laughs> destroy the card and it wouldn't have. I would have just found another way to cover it up. Um, but that is our project today. I do hope you enjoyed it. I, sorry for the gabbiness, but everyone has expressed, you know, don't do the music. You know, we like your chatter. Well, there's a lot of chatter going on there. Um, but I do hope you enjoyed it. I hope I was able to give you some tips and tricks on how I use colored pencils, um, and how I get those shading and blends. All the products, as always, as that I use will be linked down below within the video description. Just make sure if you're um, at your computer, just hit the show more. And if you're on your iPhone or your tablet, just hit the arrow down that's on the right side and you'll see the listing of products. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure you leave those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for sticking with this video, especially if you made it this long. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe, be part of my group. Make sure you ring the bell because again, something's always different, but it's always paper. I always, I hope everyone is having a great day today. Enjoy it. It is a beautiful day here where I am at for once, but always remember what's most important, everyone. Always be creative.